Hello, and this is Harold again from Hidden Room Studio with a video about the control room. Sometimes when I look at Facebook in some Cubase groups or in some forums, um, there are people complaining that if they go to the media bay, they cannot hear their samples. They won't play the samples. And sometimes they get the answer, turn the control room off. But this is the wrong answer. And in this video, I'm telling you why. The control room itself is a very powerful feature. And uh, I want in this video compare the use of Cubase with and without the control room. So first, let me explain what the control room is doing, how the connections are made in Cubase without the control room and with the control room. And what's the big great benefit for you is if you use the control room for referencing and for the media bay. But first, let me tell you about Cubase without the control room. So how is the routing working in Cubase without the control room? You can see that all tracks, the media bay and the QSense, everything is going to the stereo bus. And from the stereo bus, everything is going to the outputs one or two or whatever it's called on your interface in your interface setup. So if you press F4, go to the audio connections and um, you route your output to your interface where your speakers are connected. You can hear everything. You can hear the QSense. You can hear the media bay. Problem is that everything is going through the stereo bus. And if you have any effects, any processing in the stereo bus, it will affect the sound that you hear also from the media bay. This is now the setup in Cubase without the control room. I have two tracks. One is my unmastered tracks I want to master. The other one is a reference. And I turn the control room off. You can see when I press F4, I go to the audio connections. I see my input, outputs, group effects, external effects. And when I go to control room here, the control room is off, so I cannot add any channel. I connected the output of my sound card that is going to my speakers to stereo out left and right. And whatever I play now is going over the stereo bus, as I explained before. So let me just turn on the music for a moment. So you see here the music is playing. So here on the right side I have my media bay. I can also go to F5 to open that media bay, but most of the time I'm working here on the right zone. Go to the media bay, to my samples uh, folder where I have all the samples I bought over the years and go to any of the tracks I have here, let's see, and click on any of the loops. Let's see if there's something playing. You hear that? And you see here that this is going over the stereo bus. So what's the problem with this going over the stereo bus? If you have any effects for mastering or for mixing, like um, channel EQ or a compressor, for a glue compressor, for gluing everything a little bit together, uh, it will also be over the samples that you hear now. It's going everything is over the stereo bus. And the other problem with this setup is if I want to go referencing here and I run my unmastered version and then I solo the mastered version, the mastered version also goes over the stereo bus. So everything that's in the stereo bus and the inserts will also be on my mastered version. And you can work around with it um, making a mix bus and putting all your effects in the mix bus and the unmastered version, the reverence directly to the stereo out. There is a, a really better way to do that in the control room. So let me just show you what the control room can do for you. Cubase is working like a mixing board, like a, let's call it mixer here, board or desk, whatever you call it. You have a dedicated monitoring output section. What you see here is that all tracks are going to the stereo bus and from there to the output. Normally on a big board, you go then to the two track, to the tape machine, to the dead, to whatever media you want to record your master on. And also you split it. You can see that on the white dot, you split it and go to the monitor section where you have a volume control. And from there, you send it to the speaker. And also on the big board, you have a two track input and Q sense that are coming. 
into the mixing section and there you can select where you want to send it and what you want to hear. So if you have QSense here or something in a two track, like you want to reverence something from a CD player, it's not going over the stereo bus like in the normal setting. In the control room setting or in the big board, it's going through the stereo section or through the monitoring section directly to the speaker. In Cubase, it looks like this. In Cubase, you also have the control room mixer and interface setup. This is just like in the big board, the monitoring section. So all tracks go to the stereo bus and from there they go to the output. This is the one we connected without the control room. But you should not do that here. I will show you in a minute uh, what happens then. And here in Cubase, it's also split. You see the on white dot and going to the monitor speaker bus out section. This is that volume control you have in your control room. And from there, the monitor output in your audio connection setting, which you can find with F4, these are the ones you send to the speakers. So if you do this, the media bay will be heard. You can hear the media bay, you can have QSense, you can hear that without going over the stereo bus and without going over the processing that you have in the stereo bus. So I'll show you in a minute. You can use the QSense for references, you can hear the media bay and you can play all the tracks directly over the speaker. So do not connect when you work with the control bus, your speaker out to the output, connected to the monitor output in the control room. If you have, for example, a two-track machine, like an analog tape, or you record on another PC or somewhere else, then you use the output to send the signal there, the signal from your master bus. So let me show you that in Cubase. So let me now show you the setup in the control room. And for this, I have to disable the camera for a moment. Okay, like this, so you see all the settings. So I go to my Cubase and I press the F4 button for the audio connections. And here you see I'm in the output here and have it connected to my output one and two, like before. Now to control room and I enable the control room. And there are already some buses here, some channels uh, from my old control room setting, but I still have my output here uh, from the sound card here in the output folder. Um, so that means, as I told you before, when I now play the media bay, you will not hear it. Like this, go here, click here. You see, it's running here but you won't hear anything. So to hear it, we have to turn it to the monitor setup. So let's go back to F4, to the audio connections, and go to control room, monitor setup, and connect here output one, and output two, like this. Okay, now you get that warning because it was already connected to the standard outputs, like this, and, um, now they're gone here and are in the monitor outputs. So if I now go to the media bay and I play here one of the samples, now you can hear it. Because everything is rooted to the monitor output. That's one big advantage of this. Now you hear the media bay when you have the control room on. And one other big thing is when you want to reverence, meaning that you want to listen to a pre-recorded track to compare it to your mix or to your mastering, you can use the QSense to switch over from your mix or your master to the reverence tracks. And to do this, you have to root those tracks to the QSense. The idea of having a Q is to make a different mix for the artist than what you hear in the control room. So let me switch over to the control room here. And here you see the volume knob, as I showed you in the slide before. You see the mix. You see source Q1 and source Q2. So you can switch between the mix and two Q cents here. I already have a Q cent here that is called here. The first one, Q1, is VSD Connect. The second one is Q2. Let's call this, rename it, Ref1. Okay, we don't have to connect it to anywhere. 
It doesn't matter if it's connected to anything. But what we do now is we go to the mixer. And now we take this, the reference, and it's important that you have it here on no bus, and it won't be going to the uh, stereo bus. And here you have the Q sense. If you don't see that, you have to go right up here in Rex and select Q sense so that you see it. And so you see here the ref one, and you see the Q. And what we do, we route this to the ref one to the Q two. So if I mute now here this one, and I'm on mix, and I play it, I will hear nothing. Because now the reference is playing, but it's not connected in this moment to my main out. If I go here on the side and click on C2, I can hear it. Now we're hearing my reference. If I unmute my mix, I won't hear it because mix here is not activated. If I switch over to mix, now I hear my mix. Q is still running and I can switch back to my reference. So what if you have multiple references? Well, you can have multiple Q-sense. So let's go here. I prepared some here. I have two more references. Now I go back to my audio connection settings and add channel and it tells me I can add two more Q-sense. So I take this one. Q3, name it Ref2, and add another one, add Q1, call it Ref3, and then I go back to my mixer, like this, F3 for my mixer, and now you see I already did that before, that's why it set it here, but now I can select where to send my reference tracks, these three tracks. So I send this one to two and this one to three. And here on the right side, you see all the four cues. It says C1 for the queue that is going to the um, VST Connect and the three ones that I'm using for the reference tracks here. So now if I play my tracks in this moment here, I go here on the right side to mix, I will play my mix. Everything is running and I can hear my mix. And I go to C2, it's this one here. So here this reference. Go to C3. I hear this reference, another beat I made. And to C4, I hear this one. So here I can switch between my references and my track, my master, my mix, whatever. I switch between the stereo out here and my references. Let me do that again, go to mix. So it's playing this one here. Let me solo this. So here, this is really the one. And I'm going to C2. That's this one here. If I solo this, I will hear nothing because this is on C3. So to hear this, I go on C3. So I hear this one. And on C4, I hear this one. And these Q-sense are not going over a mix bus or the stereo out. Let me demonstrate that. I mute my unmastered version and you see it's not going to the stereo out. So I hear the mix. This is muted. Nothing you can hear. Nothing on stereo out. And these do not go to the stereo out so or to the mix bus. So they will not be affected by any inserts you have in the mix bus. Click here for the first reference. Second, third one. Without doing big routing without having to worry about insert effects and so on. Simply root your references to the QSense and do not forget to turn it to no bus here. If you have no bus here, then you have to go in a pre-fader and turn the fader down, but it doesn't matter. If you turn here and go to no bus, then you're fine. So I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, it's a very interesting use of the control room. There's no need to tell anyone if he can't hear his media bay to turn off the control room. If you use it like this, if you use it right and send it to the monitor, like with an old mixing board, go to the monitor, send it here, do not send it to the output here and you will be fine. 
you can hear your media bay and you can use the QSense for switching here the references. So please subscribe, leave a message, leave a comment and come back and I will be online with a live stream every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. or otherwise noticed on my channel. So this has been Harold from Hindroom Studio. See you next time. Goodbye.